Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports and another edition of Bike Profiles. This next bike is a customer's bike that came in, but I thought, hey, why not? Let's take a quick look at it because I bet a lot of these are still out on the road. And this goes back to the Lance Armstrong years of winning the tour. So we're gonna look at a Trek which has the Discovery Channel livery. And, you know, there's, there's some things about this bike that I really, really like and really wish to cover. Uh, just as, uh, I don't know, just like a, a knowledge to establish and where certain things that we see now as common, where they came from. So I apologize if, I, if I'm speaking too loudly, but of course I've always got uh, cars and traffic out in front of my store. Okay, so first thing I wish to cover is how absolutely awesome the Dura 7800 group set was. There are a lot of you who have mentioned to me that the look of this polished, um, and it's not bright, but it is, it is polished um, to a sense that it's not gray, <laughs> but the shifters and the crank set and the derailers are all nice silver finish. And I like that as well. Everything has gone gray or black uh, since this group set. So this is the Durace 7800 group set. And it's the last group set that had external cables. So this was a 10 speed group set. They did one more 10 speed group set called the 7900 and they hit the cable inside the handlebar like this. Well, it was awful. The lever pull, I'm sorry, the lever push was very, very stiff, very, very difficult. Um, and that was the 7900. So they also made Apologize for the noise, sorry. They also made a 7970, which was the 10 speed original Durace um, DI2 version. And so, I mean, that was one way to get rid of your 7900 uh, stiffness of the levers. You just went to DI2. Okay, so the next thing I wish, I wish to point out is the stack here underneath this stem and then the elevated stem. So when I just did a video on Bike Geometry 101, I'll, I'll tag it down below, talked about how uh, endurance frames came about. And a lot of it was, well, we had a lot of riders that this head tube was a race geometry head tube. And so they had a, a large stack height and then they had a stem with an elevated um, orientation and so bike manufacturers said well you know what we're not going to do that we can now build this all as frame up to here and if someone still wants that slammed stem look well they'll have the frame all the way up to here and then they could use a level stem or a flat or a downward angle if someone wanted to um, mitigate some of the height that the taller head tube on an endurance bike uh, provided. The other thing I wish to cover is these wheels, these triple X race lights. These were really lightweight wheels at the time. And, uh, and I think they still rank pretty well. The rim brake, carbon rim brake for this wheel set is just a really nice light wheel set. I'll, I'll see if I can find some spec and put it down in the description. Uh, the only uh, knock on the way this bike is built is you got these gator skin hard shells which are destroying the ride quality of these beautiful wheels and the frame at the time. But once again, you know, that silver crank set, that polished crank set, and I, I actually knew another guy who would polish these to a very, very bright finish. And uh, I've lost track of him now, but but uh, that's what he used to do with these crank sets. And, um, and that's nice because, you know, depending on what you're building, uh, you may want 
a silver crank set or a brightly polished silver crank set. So not much more to talk about this, but you know, when you have the triple X race light type of stuff on, on your bike, you've got a very light component group. And that's what was on this bike. You got the wheels, you got the stem, you got the uh, seat post. And I didn't notice on the handlebar, uh, it looks like it's just a regular race light. So not the triple, but I can't tell. Uh, I'm not a Trek dealer. I never was a Trek dealer, so I, I really don't know all of their product all that well. And uh, the OCOV thing, you know, low void carbon compaction, that was the whole thing for them. Uh, that's That was their little buzz uh, industry term. But, you know, a great bike. Uh, the only challenge is, like, for example, this bike now is in for repairs because the shifting is not working very well. And in fact, it's 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 pretty endemic of these 7800 shifters if you do not let if you do not uh, work them and exercise them on a frequent basis they will seize up and you can tell that this is this is really uh, original um, housing because you know most bike shops don't carry gray housing but in particular this gear indicator uh, that you know, no one uses anymore. Why? Well, because all the cables are hidden inside here. But as far as service, what we have to do for this bike is we have to replace the rear derailleur cable. And this is wonderful. I mean, look how awesome this is. All I have to do is disconnect this from the rear derailleur. But look, all external cable routing, all external cable routing, and there's the rear derailleur. So all we have to do is just take the cable out replace this without having to unwrap the bar tape or do anything like this. Because typically what happens, if you go to unwrap this bar tape, the bar tape's gonna tear, then you have to replace the bar tape and so on and so forth. Okay, I don't have blue, sir, would you mind black or some other color because I don't have blue. Um, you know, generally I wrap most bar tape, most bars in black because well, <laughs> any other color is gonna turn gray anyway. Uh, and it just doesn't look very good. But um, in this case, you could probably use white since there are some white accents on the frame, the, the uh, logos and stuff. So you could probably use white. But this now is going to be featured in a maintenance video that I'm going to shoot next. So that uh, you, if you have seized shifters, Shimano shifters, then that will help you. Okay, anyway. That's all for this particular bike. Please like and subscribe, and please let me know that you still like seeing these bike profiles. And also let me know, hey, I had one of those during the Lance years, and it was a great bike, or I still have it. Please let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you up the road.